Another very common package that we use when we are using the 1164 standard logic package within BHDL is going to be numeric underscore STD. Now the STD stands for standard logic. Here is the reason that you need the STD package, the numeric STD. It's because standard logic 1164, that package, <clears throat> what it gives you are four new data types. Okay? It's really two data types and two vector versions of them but it's standard U-Logic and standard logic. The reason those are powerful is because they can take on values that are more than just 0 and 1. They can take on a Z, they can take on a L, H, unknown, don't care, etc., etc. You get some logic operations with the 1164 package, such as ands and nands and stuff like that, but you do not get any arithmetic. You don't get a plus, you don't get a minus, or anything like that. So, we do is we need the ability to do that. Because you know when you're going to do arithmetic, the whole purpose of HDL is to abstract what's going on. You don't want to have to build binary adders at the gate level. You want to say C or sum is equal to A plus B. So, we start off by including this new numeric underscore STD library, and it gives us this ability. Except, it doesn't give it necessarily directly. What it then does is it defines two new types that you can then use the plus and minus on. The reason that it does this <clears throat> is because once you start doing arithmetic with vectors, with binary vectors, you don't know, you are looking at the, at the ones and zeros as numbers, right? But you don't know what the coding approach was to create that number. All right. So what happens is that you might have a number that is this. Okay. You might have a number that is one 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 one. And I ask you, what is that value? What's the numeric value of that? Well, I guess it kind of depends, right? I mean, if you used an encoding scheme of unsigned. Unsigned means that 0, 0, 0, 0 is the lowest value. It's 0. And then 1, 1, 1 is the highest unsigned value. That would mean that this would equal 15 in decimal. However, if you decided to code that with 2's complement, this number would actually be equal to negative 1 in decimal. Okay. So what happens is that as soon as you start doing arithmetic, it, it depends greatly on the type of coding that you're using. Now, I will jump ahead and just say this. Adds and subtracts actually work equally well, whether it's two's complement or unsigned. But what doesn't work are comparisons. Okay? Because in this situation, if I came along and I said, is 0000, 000, 000 greater than 1111, the answer would be different if these were unsigned versus two's complement. Because in one situation, this is 0 greater than 15. And in another situation, it's 0 greater than negative 1. So you can have a true versus a false response. Turns out, when you do arithmetic, you're constantly doing things that use comparisons. And it just turns out that whenever you have binary numbers, you don't have an infinite number of bits. Okay? You're always operating like it's an 8-bit number. It's a 16-bit number. So you, when you do arithmetic, you have to always check is the sum outside of my range? It, did I create a sum which is bigger than the values I can hold? Or more importantly, when you do two's complement math, if you remember from chapter two, it was a long time ago, is did you have things like two's complement overflow? So arithmetic and comparisons go along with each other whenever you do math. And so as a result, what you immediately do within standard logic is you define two new types called unsigned and signed. All it does is it is the way that you treat those numbers during comparisons. Okay? Now, this works on top of standard logic and standard U logic. So you don't just use numeric STD. You have to first put in standard logic 1164. That gives you the standard logic and standard U logic. And then those become vectors which can be treated as unsigned or signed. Okay? Now Here's the way that the VHDL looks. You simply put in here library IEEE, and then you do use IEEE dot 
standard logic 1164, and then you come back and you just pop numeric underscore std dot all. Okay? Now, what does this give you? It gives you the ability to do a whole bunch of operators. Okay? So it's going to give you the plus and the minus and the multiply, the divide. It's going to give you mod, mod for modular, REM for remainder, and absolute value. Of these, if you were to guess, these things operate on bit and bit vector. Which ones are synthesizable and which ones are not? Plus? Yes. Minus? Yes. Multiply, divide? Mm, not really. Okay? Because they're a lot harder than you might think in binary, so you tend to build dedicated circuits that handle different ways to synthesize that. But they are simulatable, so you can absolutely simulate. Mod, rem, and absolute, not synthesizable directly. You have to build different cells to make that work. But you do get arithmetic functions with this. Okay? Then, what else do you get? You get, of course, you're going to get comparison functions. That was the whole part of this. We got greater than, less than, less than and equal to, equal to, all that sort of stuff. And that allows you then to do things like, is A greater, less than B, is A less than B? And this is important when you start looking at whether these are unsigned or signed. Okay? Is that what I said before, unsigned and signed? Okay. All right, life is good. Life is good. You know what else it gives you? It gives you rising edge and falling edge functions again. Kind of simple, but it's important. When you defined 1164 standard logic, the standard logic 1164 package, you got two functions, rising edge and falling edge. Okay? But as soon as you put the numeric STD package, you started using two new data types, unsigned and signed. Those functions are no longer valid for them. So within this package, it has to give them back to you. Okay? So it's just to show that it is there. Then we get some really powerful conversion functions. And they, we allow conversions to go between unsigned and signed to integer and to signed and, signed and unsigned to integer. These are critical because once you start doing a lot of things like counters and arithmetic and loops and stuff like that, you, it is easier for you to do the math using integers. But at the end of the day, we want to create vectors that are made up of ones and zeros to synthesize. So a lot of time what you'll do in BHDL is you'll have everything comes into your entity as standard logic, okay, standard logic vectors. Within your functionality of your architecture, you'll use type integer to do math and comparisons. And then what will happen is in order to do that, you have to convert from standard logic vector to integer, do the stuff, and then after you're done, take the integer and convert it back to standard logic vector to drive your output ports. Okay? So these become very, very important. Again, not terribly meaningful at this point until we start using them. Okay? Then what we also get is you get standard logic vector to unsigned, of course, and to signed, and then unsigned to standard logic vector. So these are other conversions that you have at your disposal. Okay? All right, all right. If, if, okay, you said, I'd really just like to use standard logic vector, okay, and I don't really want to use signed and unsigned, <clears throat> okay. This would be an example of you take, your input ports are always standard logic 1164. They're always of type standard logic vector. <clears throat> and you want to use the numeric STD package. But you don't want to use signed and unsigned. You want to treat everything in there. Treat all the standard logic vectors as unsigned. You can actually put this package called numeric standard unsigned in your package declaration. And what will happen is that it'll just treat all of your standard logic vectors as unsigned. It's just a way. You don't do it very often, but I just put it in there just to show that you can actually do that. Okay? And all it does is just treat everything. You don't have to use signed and unsigned. We, we will never use that, to be honest with you. But it's just kind of interesting to know it's there. OK, OK. Now, <clears throat> there is another package. And the, the way that the book goes is I tell you what the package is. Then I tell you what the functions and the, and the conversions are that are supported for it in addition to data types. Okay? Let me tell you a few other ones. Think about the standard package has types bit and bit vector. Then we brought on standard logic 1164, 
which has these new types called standard logic and standard U logic. Then we had to do numeric STD to give plus and minuses arithmetic operations for that, those types, standard logic and standard U logic. So then we go backwards. There is a package called numeric bit. What do you think that does? It defines pluses and minuses for the standard package. So it defines plus and minuses if you are using bit and bit vector. Will we ever use that? Never. Never. <laughs> you say, why are you talking about it? Well, that's a good question. It's a very good question. You will not use it because we never use the standard package again by itself. We always use standard logic vector. Okay, 1164. Okay, well, of course, just to show completeness, there is a numeric bit unsigned. Again, never you're going to use it. Here's a couple interesting ones that it's, it's interesting that they're there, and it makes you kind of think about the way that you can use VHDL. There is a package called math real. Okay? It's in the IEEE library, so it's IEEE.math underscore real. And here's what it gives you. A lot of stuff. It gives you all these functions that are built in. Okay? Not a single one of them is synthesizable. Why in the world would you ever have a package that provides all this mathematical ability that is not synthesizable? Exactly, test benches. If you ever were assigned to create some circuit that did square root of two, okay? Or square root of pi, or something like that, like uh, value, well, let's see a good one here. Sign of an input, the maximum, the exponent, okay? Let's do the exponent. Take a number, take it to the, the natural log exponent, okay? You gotta build a circuit to do that. But wouldn't it be cool to check whether your circuit actually worked? And how would you do that? You're going to build your circuit using a process, or you're going to use like combination of logic. You're going to create some synthesizable circuit, and then you've got to test it against something. How do you test the output of your circuit that you're designing against something that is not able to be computed? Well, the way that you do it is you have to add the ability to compute it within your simulation. The way that you do that is you include this type of, li this type of package in your test bench. That way you can see if your gate level circuit actually produced the right answer as compared to this package that is provided for you. Okay? How's that feeling? Feeling all right. Feeling all right. Okay. So that kind of gives you an overview of other common packages. There's also math complex, exactly the same thing. It's just a whole bunch of functions, unsynthesizable, but it operates on complex numbers. Okay, so that's enough packages for this video.